this is a huge embarrassment 11 minutes oh no oh god dude everybody's going in it, this is always interesting because like the big youtubers walk in and now they're paying attention to things i know 10 times more than them about in terms of like my own it's like yeah this is my fucking like i've spent seven years in this game like i know everything and then i get to see like charlie actually knows everything he's talking about i have no idea if he's going to know anything he's talking about because charlie actually played the game i could tell i don't know if ludwig has ever played overwatch i feel like i need to preface this video by letting you all know i've never played a game of overwatch in my life Let's go, god this damn is it sad the only thing we can do is just not spend a single all right, dude. Come on, man. I feel like I need to preface this video by letting you okay, know dude. I've never played a game of Overwatch in my life. Pre-watch? How can I pre-watch this? It came out while I was live. <laughs> Two hours ago, dude. <laughs> dude, that is unreal. I feel like I need to preface this video by letting you all know I've never played a game of Overwatch awesome. in my life. Not because I think I'm too good for it or because the game is bad. It's actually the opposite. I think I would like Overwatch a lot, which is the problem. I don't want to get addicted to another game where I'm rolling the dice for good teammates in hopes of hitting an arbitrary rank to justify all the time I spent playing the game. Wow, that is actually extremely real. You know, that's I take the opposite impact of this action in online multiplayer games these days, chat. You know how I look at it? I don't play PvP multiplayer games off stream because my off stream time, the same way that I was, and this is actually true, before I was even a content creator, if I have chill time and I just don't want to be stressed, I can't play a PvP game because I just don't want to deal with people. So what I'll do is I'll just go play a PvP game and hang out with friends instead. And that's why I miss Overwatch, this, this version of Overwatch 2 so much. Because if the, what he just described though, right? You roll the dice on random people, random matchmaking. And it's, it's not even a matchmaking thing. It's you're just being put with other people in stressful or high pressure situations, right? And so give that with enough random people and you're going to run into just people who are assholes. And if you run into an asshole, when you only have a, like, let's say one night you come tired and you're like coming home, you're tired after doing shit all day and you have like one hour to play and you log in overwatch and some guy immediately flames you you just lost half of your free time of like that one hour it just feels it feels lame right so that's why a lot of the time i stick to pv games it's safer i already do that with valorant however <laughs> even someone like me who's not that interested in overwatch is wildly interested in all the drama surrounding it after a huge announcement was dropped by the overwatch team today that everyone's upset about and if you guys don't even play overwatch yourselves i think you'll find it interesting it all started oh, no. with this tweet which which seems again so innocent. It says game director and executive uh, this producer. This is true. It does feel very innocent, does it? They really dropped this out of nowhere. Into the future of Overwatch, eyes emoji. Watch this segment for the latest on PVE and everything else we have planned. Star emoji. Do you guys remember when I went live and then you guys said, "Hey Siegel, there's a dev stream on." I was like, "Oh, that's weird. I guess I'll watch it before I go play some Apex ranked or something." That's, I remember. It seems like a fine thing. Oh, it's just a, it's just a plan for the year. And then they talked and then about Star Wars legend and fantasy football god Super <laughs> Star Wars people. Tweets and says, They're just okay, there, just having fun talking about PvE Star Wars scraps, talent trees, and long-term progression scraps. And the only thing we're getting for PVE is archive-style missions every once in a while. Epic. What happened uh, to the last three and a half years? And if that makes no sense to you, you're like me. You haven't played this game, so let me give you some context. And to <laughs> do that, we have to teleport back to 2019, a simpler time, a pre-COVID time, and a terrible time to be at Activision Blizzard because they had a bad, bad year. It started with oh, them boy. separating from one of their best. Oh, he actually caught this. Interesting. I was wondering, I was wondering if people are going to talk about this because I talked about this, I think, in my video a while back. This is came around the same time that Bungie left. Developers. They're around the same time period that Overwatch 2 and the first bits of being a full PV live service game happened was around this time period. I talked about it in my initial videos. I wonder if you watched it. There's Bungie, which dropped their stock a little bit. Then they had to lay off 775 staff members, despite having wow. an amazing 2018. And then they had all the backlash for firing casters and banning Hearthstone players over their support of Hong Kong, which led yep. to an Overwatch character actually being the symbol of support for Hong Kong. Uh, and, and all that combined uh, made 2019 uh, their worst year in a long time. Uh, it was worse than uh, 2018, 2017, and 2016. And companies, companies, they, they like going up and to the right. And this this is this is not that. Uh, so bad year <laughs> for Activision Blizzard. Oh, no. And at their annual event, BlizzCon, where they get to announce all their fun things, uh, they started out by apologizing for what they did to the casters and the players in Hearthstone for their support of Hong Kong. 
and then have yep. a fun announcement. Yes. Yes, we are. Oh, no. Which was them announcing Overwatch 2. Which nobody expected at the time, and even me, someone, again, who had never played the game, I was like, that's cool. Maybe I play that game. This is, everyone's hype about this. The video got 20 million views, and everyone was popping off. Yep. Everybody was big hype. Also, the cinematic was pretty sick. And they expanded on what Overwatch 2 was supposed to be because no one really... Wow, SI not found. Ludwig, you're going in. He saw it coming, so no one really knew what the goal was of the game. And here is Jeff Kaplan, who is a beloved or was a beloved Activision Blizzard employee and the lead at Overwatch talking about it. Now, Actually, people did expect it because it was leaked. Yeah, we, we I, was, I didn't want to go into it too hard, but yeah, people were kind of expected for like a year at that point or whatever. to lots of you, there's a common request that you want out of Overwatch, and Overwatch 2 is going to deliver on this. And that's for more if this hurts, man. and for PvE, for cooperative experiences. Yeah, PvE, player versus environment. You know, the PvP is what everyone knows Overwatch for, but but let me get immersed into the world more. That way, when I look up the Overwatch porn at night, it, it, it hits a little harder. Overwatch and you know, you know, never shame one of the biggest audiences, you know? A ton of PvE content. That, they kept this game relevant. When there was no content, they made content, I guess. We'll have a complete story experience. <laughs> Oh, the God, first dude. of which, which is called Rio de Janeiro, is also playable in Hall A for all of you today. All good news. I play there. All things. It was but then cool. here's a key promise that Jeff makes about the plans for Overwatch 2 and a new co-op mode. I cannot wait to hear what you think about it. In addition, as you saw, we have something called Hero Missions. Which uh -oh. Hero Missions are focused on highly replayable cooperative experience. The, the analogy we like to use on the team is similar to what Adventure Mode is to Diablo versus its campaign. Okay. That's what Hero Missions are intended to be. And they're powered... You know, the original uh, analogy to Adventure Mode kind of makes no sense because Adventure Mode is an end game. Like, that's uh, uh, people just running around doing stuff, Diablo. It's like kind of weird. But yeah, that, I wouldn't say that's necessarily how. Anyway. Really cool keep going, keep going. System where you can level up your heroes, get more powerful, customize your abilities. Makes sense. Basically, they have a new co op mode with uh, different uh, replayability features, skill trees. Basically, every time you play with your friend, it'll be a new experience. It'll be fun. It'll make you want to play Overwatch more without getting bored. That That's that's the main promise that he gave at this announcement at the end of 2019. End of 2019. Keep that date in mind. Three and a half year years ago. 2020. Nothing really announced. 2021 hits. Big announcement. He says nothing was really announced because they said they were going dark for a while. If you remember, at the end of 2019, they said, we're going to be going dark for a while. We're working on this game. You will not hear for us for a while. They came out and said that stuff. Jeff Kaplan, the guy who was on the stage we just listened to, is leaving Blizzard after 19 years. And this guy, again, is a legend. Super yes. beloved by all of the fans and, and the players of Overwatch and the guy who is leading uh, the game. And so for him to leave uh, got people a little bit nervous. And there started to be some hints that they might have announced Overwatch 2 too early, that they should have waited a little bit. Not just because fans were getting antsy, but because it was hurting Overwatch, the original game, Overwatch 1. Uh, they stated that they well, put too much focus on Overwatch 2 over the yeah. past few years to the detriment of support for the original game. Wikipedia so because of that, they changed <laughs> the release plans for Overwatch 2. Rather than like What's actually interesting here, and I don't think Ludwig's going to go into it too hard because he doesn't have the background knowledge, is all the Titan stuff that went in behind the scenes, right? And we, I've gone into that before talking about how, you know, they had the Titan before Overwatch and that's how we made Overwatch. And then now after Overwatch, we're going kind of back to original roots, right? To go back into PvE. So it's... What is cycle of life here, I guess. Let's have the game all ready to go and then sell it out to you guys. We are going to release it earlier with just the PvP portion. And then that PvP that we were talking about, that's all like the new fun stuff, will come later. So let's let's just, because Overwatch 1 is kind of dying because you're all waiting for Overwatch 2, hurry along Overwatch 2. And that's exactly what they did. And a little uh, over a year ago, they launched an invitational beta. And then October of last year, yep. they launched the game itself. I forgot Jeff Goodman left in mid-22. Lead developer for New Heroes, Jeff Goodman left in mid-22. Damn, Goodman was awesome. He had a lot of crazy heroes. And the game's launch didn't go so hot. 
uh, it wasn't the best launch of all time. Now, I don't know if this strategy was necessarily dumb, by the way, before we jumped. So I wonder if he's going to jump into player counts. Surprisingly, Overwatch 2 launch was insanely successful in terms of player count. If you remember the announcements they had immediately afterwards, even though it was such like a, I don't know, they must have hit like a weird timing because Overwatch 2 didn't have that much content on launch, right? It, it, it was very much like a letdown in many ways. But then we had these massive like 100,000 player queues and they said they had something, they, their player count. I remember this stat. They posted a player count afterwards that was something like 10 or 20 million players in four days. Might have been, uh, sorry, seven days or 14 days. I'm not sure which. You can go look. It's the same exact time frame as Apex Legends launch. Like if you go back and you look at Apex Legends launch, remember how insane that was? That was Overwatch 2's launch. Like the same players and the same time. It's crazy. How bad the game launch was. Uh, Overwatch wasn't doing very well after the announcement of Overwatch 2. I mean, viewership was declining throughout this period. They were averaging less for their kickoff events than XQC averages. Look, 50... <laughs> okay, okay. Overwatch League is very different, okay, but we in know. 2022 for the kickoff clash, XQC, he's at 62K right now. So so I get the concerns <laughs> internally and why they needed to rush oh out Overwatch God. 2. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. What Ludwig only knows the surface level, so I'll just say this. Overwatch League is actually an entirely different team internally. They're not even the same developer team at all. Um, they're, they are completely separate. So... Yeah, that's actually one of the few things that is entirely separate, has nothing to do with that. Yeah, Overwatch League is considered practically its own different company at that point. And that's exactly why they did it. But the launch did not go great. Uh, and, and here's, <laughs> donkey here's video! Donkey, oh yeah, I forgot uh, about the first Donkey it. video. The, the haters have been calling this game Overwatch 1.5. I gotta say, haters, you guys are stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. This is more like Overwatch 1.1. Oh Immediate. no. Yeah, and, and he goes into why all the, the there's so many problems with Overwatch. But you don't gotta just take Donkey's word for it. You can just go to the Overwatch subreddit and sort by top for the past year, and everybody's upset. Both in terms of okay, what to be the game fair, usually and how it's monetized now. And they talk about how the is oh, in damage no. control mode and how there's just a bunch of illegal things happening in Overwatch and how they don't give you nearly enough skins for your devotion and how the your best days are true. now behind Not them. wrong, though. Uh, and there is still one hope, though. If you go to any of the threads or any of the comments, there's still one hope that, that Dunky kind of uh, uh, puts out here. But now to finally have Overwatch 2 in my hands, it feels like a major defeat. It feels like Blizzard could be the next Bioware. However, we still haven't played the co-op <laughs> mode, which for me is the main draw of Overwatch 2. Oh no, Dunky! When's your video coming, Dunky? I'm ready. I'm ready, Dunky. Oh no. For the sake of the fans, I hope that 99% of the development team has been focused on the co-op. About that. Because I don't know what they've been doing for more than two years with the PvP. So P <laughs> oh, no. PvP overall a bit disappointing. It's very similar to Overwatch 1, although fun to play, and I know many people who do play it, and maybe it's balanced a little bit better. It is not a sequel. It is not Overwatch 2. It is just an update to the original game. And yes. PvP or PvE, excuse me, is the thing that everyone is excited for. And that brings us to today and why their announcement was so bad. So let's take a look again at this tweet with the eyeball and the star emojis, and star then take emojis. a look again one more time at the skill tree promised, right? This is the hero mode with the- well, it's, not just the it's not just the skill tree though. It's a talent trees in conjunction with elemental damage types, players creating builds, they had power progression systems. That's the foundation to a PV looter shooter, right? Not even just looter shooter, PV games. It doesn't have to be looter shooter, it could be Stuff that's not even specifically based on loot. You get the idea, right? Skill tree, super. Also guilds. Super Sorry, did I say guilds? I said builds. Huge replayability. <laughs> now let's watch it together. Oh no! And so we're left with another difficult choice. Do we continue to pour all that effort into to PVE, um, uh, hoping that we can land it at some point in the future? Um, or do we stick with this set of values that we've aligned on and, and focus on the live game and focus on serving all of you? Now, this is the executive producer who prefaced this by saying running Overwatch to PVP by itself is very difficult and we want to do a good job, but we don't know if we can do a good job and do PVE. And so then he drops his bomb. With everything we've learned about what it takes to operate this game at the level that you deserve, it's clear that we, we can't deliver on that original vision for PVE that was shown in 2019. 
And what that means is that we won't be delivering that dedicated hero mode with talent trees, um, that long-term power progression. Uh, those things just aren't in our plans anymore. Yeah, I appreciate Ludwig's... And he is doing a pretty good job catching and summarizing everything. It's going to... Dude, I'm so... We know that this is going to be disappointing to many of oh. you, which is why we wanted to bring it up before we talked about the roadmap. And to be perfectly honest, it's been really difficult for, for many of us and, and a lot of folks on the team who've poured their heart and soul into that, into that stuff. Now, I do not envy being a developer ever, even in the best of times. You Especially in this case, by the way, because uh, Jared recently started working on Overwatch too. Jared, I think, has only been working on Overwatch since maybe, you know, like uh, he wasn't there in Overwatch one. Pretty confident. I'm pretty sure he wasn't. So imagine being the guy who's got to deliver that news. <laughs> That's tough people who are just dogging you for more and more and more but this is just a simple lack of hitting expectations expectations yep. were set and expectations were failed to be met and that will make people upset and i think justifiably so uh but that's that's the huge bomb all the pve all the things that jeff talked about on stage that we watched together uh are are not happening and so where the pvp experience was a bit of a disappointment because it didn't feel very different from overwatch one uh the pve is not even going to happen anymore i will say pvp is definitely an improvement for any hardcore overwatch player i will say this again we, i will give them credit where they deserve it Thank fucking God I don't have to go against Double Shield every game. I would have never reinstalled this game. I would have quit and never come back if I had to play against Sigma Rissa on ladder or Sigma fucking Rodog. You get the idea. They said they'll have some story-driven things that might occasionally be canon, but it'll be somewhat like seasonal, kind of like they've done in the past, as opposed to the much larger plan that was in place before. And that's and that's where Overwatch is at now, uh, which which uh, is is sad, you know? And, and maybe it you is can sad. think to yourself, oh, well, I'm glad I am... Uh, team valorant or uh still playing tf2 for some reason because it's really fun i don't i, I don't know <laughs> team tf2 no one see what ludwig does understand is the sad thing about my genre is it's fucking dead no one makes games in this genre there's overwatch and there's nothing the last game in this genre was fucking tf2 in 2007 and then i got overwatch beta in 2015 that's it boys i got paladins i guess yeah okay Paladins. Okay, yeah, I forgot about Paladins. That technically... Paladins was 2016! That's also... The, like, what do you mean? <sighs> this, this genre is dead. It is not extremely popular. Every fast-paced FPS that comes out dies in like 10 seconds. You guys remember Hyperscape? You guys remember fucking Battleborn? You guys remember Lawbreakers? You guys remember Gundam Evolution? Yeah, let's, just being honest. At least they can get servers, though. Okay. At least they're getting servers. That's not. At least it's playable. Okay. Oh, what you guys play? But I think it's just sad for the people who enjoyed this game because I know a lot of them personally. Even my editor, Shake Drizzle, I think is like a paper two Overwatch player, and he loves playing that shit every night. He'll even be late on edits just to play that game a little more. And now he can't <laughs> have fun co-op with all his friends. Sad. Sad. Very Wish they sad. Did a better job over at uh, uh, the Activision Blizzard, but I think this was a lot of internal pressure from higher ups yes. to deliver on a product and over hype a product to get them out of a tumultuous time, which led to disaster for the game itself. Uh, that, and that I disagree with, actually, because there's a lot more in depth stuff that we went into talking about how they originally wanted to make a PV game with Titan, all this other stuff. It's very obvious the developers tried to go back to that core idea and create a very compelling PV game using specifically the talent on the dev team with who all were from MMOs and PV games prior to making Overwatch and Overwatch was suddenly and surprisingly incredibly successful, right? So it seems like they're trying to go back to the roots and there's more to it than just overhyping. Like, no, they weren't. I don't think they were intentionally overhyping. I think that they wanted to go that direction straight up and then they realized, wait, the business of making this move is so dangerous that we have to double back, especially because we're abandoning our current core audience. And then now they double backed and they go, yeah, about that, all that PV stuff though. Like, yeah, we fucked up and we can't do it unless we have a whole nother dev team and they can't make a whole nother dev team for some reason, which I still find ridiculous. So not ridiculous. I kind of understand it, but it would be such it would be cool, and I don't care. And I'm mad, and I'm angry. That's all you got to know. So that's why everyone's mad at Overwatch. All right, that's it. See you later. Have a good day. Subscribe, everybody, if you want. All right, <laughs> see you later. Maybe I should play an Overwatch game, right? Let me, let me buy it at the dip.
buy buy low, sell high. Let me start playing now, and then when it comes <laughs> back around in a couple years, Jeff comes back. Oh, we're all gonna be partying. <laughs> oh no! Or I'll just never play. Yeah, maybe that makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like you, Ludwig. You're funny. <laughs>